Mr. Trejo, ¿cómo anda? Ah, bien, bien, gracias. Thank you so much. Man, I, I love the documentary, and, and I've, I've, you know, I've interviewed you a couple times over the years, and I know a lot about your story, but um, seeing the documentary was inspiring, motivating. What, what do you think are the most important parts of your story that people should be taking away from it? Well, you, you know, when I was doing it, the one thing I wanted to do was make sure that when somebody in juvenile hall and somebody in high school and somebody in prison, it, 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 they just... They just see hope. They just have some hope. That's it. That's all. And I showed it uh, Mario Castillo, my uh, my sister, and somebody that I met in San Quentin when I was doing Blood In, Blood Out. And when he got out, we, we uh, came to work for me. We uh, he works with the lifers that are all coming out of the prison right now. And uh, we showed it to him, and they said, "Good, there's hope. That's it. Hope, and that's." That was, that's the message that I want to give. Doesn't matter where you start, it's where you end. Everything good that has happened to me has happened as a direct result of helping someone else. Everything. It's the idea that I can evolve. That's Danny's life. Over the years, whenever I've gotten a chance to talk to you, whether it's on a red carpet or, you know, here on a set or something like that, I, I, I realize you're one of the happiest people in the entertainment industry. <laughs> Did you have this happiness back when you were a young man? You know, I, 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 did you have it? Or, or was that something that you discovered as you, you know, came into this new life? You know what? I think I used uh, humor as a tool. You know, because you you, 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 you've got to have a sense of humor in prison or you go crazy. You know what I mean? And, uh, but I think uh, the joy that I feel now uh, in helping people and in, uh, in working to make a better life for the people around me, I think that, that's, the, that's the happiness. You know, I, everybody talks about success. Success is being able to wake up in the morning and, and loving the day, you know what I mean? Success is going to bed at night feeling good, you know? Um, I remember, th I don't know if this was before Machete, but around 2010, 11, or maybe it was like 12, I went down to Kid Frost um, studio out in East LA. Your son was there. Uh, I was hanging out with Gilbert, and you showed up. You're just walking through the streets of the neighborhood, you know, like, and <laughs> everyone's coming up. Everyone's coming up to you. You're grabbing, you know, some ice cream from the ice cream man. I, you can't do that anymore, right? Or do you still go to the old neighborhood and walk around? I still do it. I still do it. I just, you know what? Every morning I ask God, let me sign every autograph. Let me take every picture. Because what a blessing it is to be able to just make somebody's day. You know, just to give somebody some joy. It's like awesome. It is just like such a great feeling. I made a promise to myself. Start trying to do good. I became a drug counselor. An opportunity to help somebody one night got him into his first movie. My career took off immediately. The first five years, I just played inmate number one. Cholo number one. SA number one. Number 10. Eddie Bunker, screenwriter, goes, you're Danny Trejo. This is one of the movies that people are afraid of. I want to say, why me? <laughs> you, you have, you become a, a, a character actor over the years as, as the, the epitome of a tough guy, right? But do you think that, and, and part of that is that in your real life, we saw how you had to deal with your emotions. You had to deal with them by pushing them to the side and being really strong and being really hard. Do you think that acting helped you get back into your emotions? Let me tell you something. My son directed me into a movie. He directed me into a, in a movie called From a Son. Look it up. But, but, uh, but, uh, but in this movie, I had to cry. You know, and I, and I don't, I don't cry. Never showed that kind of emotion. You know, I mean, men don't cry, and and uh, but all day he kept talking about when he was a baby and when he was a baby and this. Remember when I did this? Remember when I had? You know, it was so funny because I remember one time uh, he had the chicken pox, and he had one little chicken pox right here, and I said, "Don't scratch that, or you'll get a scar." And he went like this, you know, like, and he's got a little scar right there, so. And he showed me that, and we like laughed. And then, but then, 
when it came time to do this scene, we're in the desert, it's cold, and I'm, I'm with his girlfriend uh, in the movie, and, and he's, he died, and we're looking for his body, and, and we started talking, and when I started crying, I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. He softened me up, and he hit the, all the spots, and I, I, when, when he said cut, I looked around, all the crew was crying. I mean, it's like everybody was, was crying. And so he's a brilliant director. I, and if I got to, I'll put him up against anybody. You know what I mean? And, and he, he, did, he, did, he did a movie with no budget. You know what I mean? Had, had me a motor home, had the, the girl lead a trailer. And, <laughs> you know, so... He was just, he did great. That's awesome. Danny, you know, you had a very challenging life. We see a lot of that in the documentary. But let's just say we go back to the beginning of your life. We pluck you out of Pacoima. You never go to St. Quentin. We put you in some Brady Bunch household in Beverly Hills, and that's how you grow up. Okay? You go to school. You do everything correctly from the get-go. Do we have the Danny Trejo that we see and are inspired by today? I, I don't think so. I think, I think my life... <clears throat> Uh, had a lot to do with who I am now. You know, I mean, when I was, in 1968, when I went to the whole, me and Ray Pacheco, Henry Quijada had started a bit, uh, 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 a riot that, uh, that really hurt some people. And so when we were in the whole, it was like, you know, they, they even my father, they were gonna put me in a gas chamber. And, and I, I, uh, I remember saying, Diosito, if you, if you uh, let me die with dignity, not I didn't want to think I was going to get out. Just let me die with dignity, and 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 I'll say your name every day, and I'll I'll do whatever I can for my fellow man till I die. But I thought it was just going to be a couple of years, and and then they're going to kill me. But you'll see the fool. He's okay. I'm going to give you the rest of your life. And so I owe. This is one of the reasons that I. I do try to do so much because I oh, and I even asked God a couple of days ago, Yosito, how am I doing? You're almost out of hell, Danny. You keep it up. You keep helping because that's when we pass out food. We do everything we can for our fellow man and everybody that I know. You know, everybody that I choose to call my friends, they do the same thing. Danny, last thing, I, 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 and then I got to go. Um, I, you're always taking business. Uh, you're doing all these businesses. I got a pitch for you. Trejos Espejos, mirrors for machos. Every guy that looks into the mirror, they see you staring right back at them. <laughs> awesome. Take it easy, my man. Thank you. All right. God bless you.